to capture an image, there is one thing you absolutely need, which is light. I'm very sure you've heard of the exposure triangle before. It consists of the aperture, which controls the amount of light let into a camera. We also have ISO, which controls the gain or amplitude of the light. And then the last mechanism known as the shutter. But light isn't the only thing that shutter affect. It also plays a major role on how motion is captured. And not all motion looks the same. So how does an image make use of shutter to control light and motion? Let's get talking. What is shutter speed and how does it work? Along with aperture and ISO, shutter speed is part of the exposure triangle. To understand this, let's recap how a camera captures light. Light enters the lens and passes through the aperture and lands on the digital sensor or film stock to create an image. In between the lens of the sensor is a barrier known as the shutter. The shutter's job is to block light from the sensor. Now the shutter opens for a predetermined amount of time before shutting. This repeats many times per second. The amount of time the shutter is opened is known as the shutter speed, which is usually measured in fractions of a second. For example, a shutter speed of 150th lights for 150th of a second. The two direct effects of shutter speed are exposure and motion blur. First, let's talk about exposure. The shutter controls how long the frame is exposed to light. The slower the shutter, the longer the frame is exposed to light, resulting in a brighter image. The faster the shutter, the less light reaches the frame, resulting in a darker image. With the rise of digital camera came a new kind of shutter. In fact, shutter speed in digital camera is more of a function of the camera sensor. The camera's sensor is populated with thousands of receptors called pixels. These are in charge of collecting the light when the images are recorded, but until then, they are always off. When the shutter release button is pressed, the pixel turns on and off for a predetermined amount of time. And this is how shutter speed works on the digital realm. Maybe this could be a lot of information to digest. So for a complete breakdown for mechanical versus digital shutters, um, rolling versus global shutters, and the rule of um, shutter angle, kindly give me a sub as I take time to break them all down for you in my upcoming videos. For now, let's focus primarily on the different visual effects of shutter speed. Now, the function of shutter speed in the exposure process is straightforward, but how it affects motion is a little complicated. Every motion picture contains some amount of motion blur. Faster shutter speed reduces motion blur, whilst slower shutter speed increases motion blur. The most cinematic shutter speed for a film and video is found using the 180 degree shutter rule. When shooting film or video, there are certain look that many image makers are after. You've probably heard of cinematic video or the way uh, motion is captured that mimics actual film. To get this, all you need to do is follow the 180 degree rule. The rule explains the relationship between shutter speed and frame rate. Frame rate is the frequency at which consecutive images called frames appear on a display. The 180 degree shutter rule says the shutter speed should be double your frame rate. So if you are shooting 24 frames per second, then your shutter speed should be set to 1 48th of a second. And this same technique is applied to any other frames you go into. Most cameras don't have 1 48th, but it's 1 50th. So if you are shooting at 24 frames and your camera doesn't give you the option of 1 48th, but 1 50th, it's the same. You can go in for 24 to a 1 50th. But why this ratio? For most cinematic history, um, starting in the late 1920s, the industry standard for film has been 24 frames per second, with a shutter angle at 180 degrees. This remained unchanged for decades. Over time, we have become accustomed to this amount of motion blur 
which is just what movies are supposed to look like. It's only when filmmakers deviate from this 180 degree shutter rule that we notice the motion blur. So let's take a look at why cinematographers use various shutter speeds for different effects. Starting with slow shutter speeds, anything set above 180 degree. A slow shutter speed creates more motion blur which has a unique storytelling effect. For example, flashbacks. They come to his home in the afternoon looking for his business. They find his wife and kids in the house and decide to wait for Soze. In usual suspect, cinematographer Newton Thomas shot this at 6 frames per second and wide open shutter. When played back at 24 frames, we see this uh, motion stuttering with lots of smearing. He lets the last Hungarian go. He waits until his wife and kids are in the ground and then he goes after the rest of the mob. This was also used in Wolf of Wall Street as Jordan starts tripping off. Director of photography Rodrigo used the 360 degree shutter angle at 12 frames per second to increase the motion blur of the image. However, if you are shooting at higher frame rates, the 180 degree rule applies less. The Hobbit was famously shot at 48 frames per second but needed a 270 degree shutter to compensate for a more natural motion blur. Another reason to use a slow shutter speed is for long exposure shots. We've been talking about shutter speed in fractions of a second but long exposure can last for a minute of a time. Picasso experimented with what we call light drawing by using a small light at slow shutter speed. Slow shutter speeds can be a creative way to capture highly stylized shots. On the other hand, eliminating motion blur has its own unique applications. This is done with faster shutter speed and anything below 180 degree. A faster shutter speed reduces the amount of motion blur, making the video appear more hyper realistic. Cinematographers use faster shutter speed stylistically to amplify intensity or realism. This is commonly used in scenes with common actions, often coupled with a handheld camera. Janusz Kumunski refers to this effect as staccato. He shot his sequences with either a 45 or 90 degrees shutter. This extreme lack of blur means we can see individual dead particles in the air, creating a chaotic visual experience. Kaminsky also used the shutter for a different effect by offsetting the timing of the shutter so that light hits the frame while it's moving. He was able to create this vertical streaking highlight. As we've discussed, there are certain filmmaking rooms when it comes to using shutter speed to create a cinematic look. However, some of the best cinematographers break those rules to create something unique. Mastering shutter speed and the exposure triangle as a whole will give you the tools necessary to best tell your story. If you loved this video, kindly don't forget to give me a sub and also hit the notification bell icon to get notified on my newly uploaded videos. Lots of filmmaking videos coming up. See you in my next video.